I knew that it was keeping me alive and that uh, now I had a chance to get a heart transplant down the road and uh, it uh, just terrific no, no other way of saying it size of your fist and works around the clock? Your heart. It beats an average of 100,000 times a day, pumping blood continuously throughout your body. If that pumping were to stop, you'd have a heart attack. It's estimated that over 70,000 Canadians experience a heart attack each year. In 2001, 19,000 Canadians died from heart attacks. I'm Sheila Walsh. Finding the Answers is a series that will introduce you to some remarkable patients and doctors from Toronto's University Health Network. UHN includes the hospitals of Princess Margaret, Toronto General, and Toronto Western. Mike McDonald was born on August 9, 1948, in Alliston, Ontario, the second youngest of Olive and Roland McDonald's five children. The family eventually moved to Streetsville, where Mike attended high school. A few years after his graduation, Mike agreed to be his cousin's best man. The wedding party would also include 19-year-old Sandy Mullet. It was love at first sight for the young couple, who were soon inseparable. Mike and Sandy were married on September 4, 1971. Their family of two grew to four, with the addition of their children, Kelly and Scott. They now live in Acton, Ontario, where Mike revels in his role as grandpa. In today's program, we'll learn what happened after Mike became one of those 70,000 Canadians to suffer from a heart attack. Well, I had a, um, uh, two heart attacks in, uh, in June of uh, 2003, and uh, after that, um, uh, you know, I was cleared to go back to work. After a couple of months, I went back to work, and uh, I only worked a couple of months, and uh, I started to feel really weak and I started to, uh, to uh, have problems spitting up blood. When Mike was uh, put in the hospital June the 11th because of the two heart attacks, they decided to put in a angioplasty and after a couple of months he returned to work and after two months he was 220 pounds and he went down to 130 pounds. They figured I had problems with my lungs, so they sent me to another hospital. And uh, while I w went to see the specialist for the lungs, he said, no, it's not your lungs, it's, you've got a problem with your heart. He continually was in the hospital. His hemoglobin was low. His blood pressure was extremely low, and he just was not feeling well. Um, in that time, our Dr. Pete was in um, contact with Dr. Ross and they had decided to put in a defibrillator in September the 21st. Um, before we could, before the 21st came of September, Mike just continuously got worse. So they had to transfer him down to Toronto General by ambulance. Uh, on his trip down here, he does not remember a thing. As a matter of fact, I don't even know how my daughter and I got down here. We have no idea. I don't remember the trip down. He doesn't remember the trip down. Um, when we got to uh, the CICU, um, Mike was just in a state that I'd never seen anybody. He just was staring straight at the ceiling which he did for approximately five days. 
15 months after experiencing his first heart attack, Mike McDonald and his family anxiously waited for his prognosis from the doctors at UHN. In September 2004, Mike McDonald was rushed by ambulance from Oakville Trafalgar Hospital to UHN's Toronto General Hospital. The 56-year-old grandfather had previously experienced two heart attacks and was now suffering from severe heart failure. Assigned to Mike's case was the medical director of the cardiac transplant program at UHN, Dr. Heather Ross. There's a few ways that patients come into, into our system. One is that they get referred and they come in through the clinic. Uh, they're the, the walking patient, the ambulatory patient who are, who are also still critically ill from heart failure. But Mike actually was a different category of patient and he was the patient who was clearly very ill from his heart failure uh, and was actually transferred directly to our coronary care unit for urgent assessment. He'd had a long history of coronary artery disease and when he was transferred in, had had an, a new rhythm problem called atrial fibrillation, which was thought to have unraveled his stable uh, status. So he was transferred in for an urgent evaluation. And unfortunately, what we were hoping was that if we corrected the atrial fibrillation, that his clinical syndrome might settle, allow us to optimize his medications and potentially avoid transplant, which is always our goal whenever possible. Uh, but that was not the case and he remained quite unstable in our coronary care unit. We had to put in a temporary mechanical device called an intra-aortic balloon pump which is designed to help uh, relieve the heart work and help improve the blood flow to the heart and that didn't improve him uh, substantially either and so as a result we realized that he was likely going to die in the coronary care unit without a transplant. While Mike McDonald was given 24 hours left to live, the team at UHN had not given up hope. So the, the role of the heart failure and transplant team is to, when a patient comes in urgently, is to be able to make sure that we sort of run through a series of questions. The first question is, are you sick enough to need a transplant? And the question clearly in Mike was yes. The next question becomes, is there anything else I can do to avoid this, which is why we tried to get the heart back into its normal rhythm, adjust the medications and see. Unfortunately, the answer to that one was no. There really were no other therapies that we could offer, Mike. Then the next question, which is often the most challenging for patients and family, is to sort out whether or not the patient's actually a candidate. And with Mike, there were a couple of issues. He'd had diabetes and we were concerned to make sure that the diabetes hadn't affected any other part of him which would have suggested that he would have been very high high risk for the transplant and possibly not a candidate so really in the first 24 hours what we actually went through was exactly that process yes he is a candidate so now what is our next step and it, it was a team decision uh, regarding the mechanical circulatory support of the left ventricular assist device. There's risk at the time of the implant, and there's also a risk over time with the device. So by no means do I believe that we should put the device in everybody who's waiting. But in a patient who's as critically ill as Mike, their risk of dying is about 5 to 10% per week, which is a very high risk.